What an honor. Look who we have with us. It is none other than, none other than Tammy Wynn. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I, I am so excited on so many levels to be with you this afternoon and to have just a really casual yet deep and robust conversation because we've got so much going on with our illustrious Tammy Wynn right now, and I can't wait to share this with you. So before we get into anything about her stepping into the role as president of the IHPC for 2021, Tammy has an amazing announcement. Tammy, tell us, tell us about this award that has just been bestowed upon your queenly head. <laughs> well, first of all, Colleen, thank you so much for taking the time to spotlight this because this is really, really big news. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to tell you that I have been elected into the, so the National Association of Social Workers Pioneer Program. And this is a very prestigious award within NASW. They, um, it was launched in 1994, and there have only been uh, around 800 members uh, so far inducted into this program. Um, mind you that there are 120,000 oh. NASW members, so currently, so this is a really big honor. And um, with that uh, induction, there is some recognition by the NASW, which is very important to the IHPC because we will be able to spotlight um, our social work certificate that we have. And the, the Pioneer Program basically honors people who have done something specifically in the evolution uh, of the profession, something to really um, do something that is new and enriches the profession. And so they, they are basically recognizing me for the fact that in animal hospice and palliative care as a social worker, that I am paving the way for a brand new career path for social workers, which is going to be really great news to our current members of the IAHPC, who are in many times um, on the veterinary side. Um, they're, they're veterinarians, registered vet techs, and we espouse in the IHPC the interdisciplinary team and how important it is and our social work certificate gives education to social workers so that they're able to join our amazing members who are on the veterinary side so that they can really deliver a service to our our um, amazing pet parents who are out there and the people who are dealing with really tough end of life situations for their beloved babies. Yes. You know what, Tammy, let's, I'm going to unpack some of that a little bit. So if, if you put the normal statistics to the membership of NASW and you said it's what, roughly 120,000 members, mm -hmm. right? So if you put the normal statistics to that, which is 67% of our population in the U.S. Uh, owns a pet, we've got, and I'm just doing some really, really quick math, let's just say 72,000 members of NASW are going to be like you and I. They're going to be pet lovers. And so when they, when they get to hear about another aspect of care that they can bring to people that are that that need what they have as far as support and things like that that's huge right it's huge you know colleen just if we if we pause right there with what you're talking about so the number of social workers who are out there in the world first of all they are pet parents and unfortunately none of us are getting out of here without an end of life experience likely mm -hmm. with their, their pets. So even from a personal level as a social worker, recognizing that this field even exists for their own health and support, which is kind of how I founded uh, Angel's Paws. And I, I found myself as a devastated pet parent going through pet loss 
with no resources out there. There were no pet loss support groups and no grief counselors that really focused on pet loss that I was able to find when I was going through my loss in 2003. And so there are many, many social workers in the world right now who personally will benefit from this field yeah. and find the level of support that just has not existed for the pet parent population population before this. Yeah. But additionally, um, each of these social workers are in practice in some way, more than likely, and their clients who are coming to them with that statistic that you just gave of how many people have pets, their clients are pet parents. Mm -hmm. And even if their client is coming to them for another purpose, let's say they're coming to them for, for a counseling situation, for addiction, or for a, another mental health uh, situation, if they are, you know, have some, a, a personality issue, if they um, have suicidal ideation, if they have severe depression, they may be coming to that social worker for counseling. The, the social worker may be in a different field. They may be a school social worker. And so the students um, who come in and that they're working with, they go home and they're loved up by that fluffy, you know, bundle of fur who's, you know, so happy to see them every time they, they walk in the door. So if it's a school social worker, if it is a social worker who works in acute care human hospitals, so you've got a human who is in there with potentially a serious health issue, mm -hmm. but they're very worried because they've left at home that big bundle of fur who can't wait for them to get home and and you know who'll be a little bit mad like where have you been although that's the thing about our pets they're never mad they're just never. like yeah, no. no we need to be more like them yes, yes we do <laughs> yes we do so you know it doesn't matter what the field that the social worker finds themselves in if they're dealing with clients again based on that statistic you just gave it's a high likelihood that that person has a pet at home. And if the situation that that social worker is working with the client with at this moment happens to coincide at the exact same moment as their pet is beginning to decline and face end of life, they've got a double hit going on. So for a social worker to really understand the dynamic that, that, that may be entering into their therapy and their work with a client, that also is just shrouded with this sadness and this grief and potentially sometimes a disenfranchised grief. Right. I mean, right. many times, you know, th this client of theirs may be at home with other people who really don't get it, aren't the pet lover that they are. Yeah. And so they could be doubly struggling. And that social worker, if they can really understand the breadth of animal hospice and palliative care, they can deliver such a great, rich, mm -hmm. different service than they've been delivering up to this point. You know, Tammy, you and I, we have some kind of similar backgrounds with, with caregiving in our background, you coming through the social work side and me coming through the, the funeral, the death care industry side. And, you know, I, I have said to so many funeral directors when they've asked me, you know, you ever going to come back on the human side? And I'm like, guys, I got to tell you, I, you know, I don't like death. Don't get me wrong. But boy, my, my role now with animals and helping pet lovers, that, that part is so rewarding because we deal with pure love and pure grief. Okay, with people, I, as I've always said a, a gazillion times, when you ask somebody to describe their relationship with a pet, they don't say it's complicated or we're estranged. We don't use those words, right? right. Like yeah. we do on the human side. So in our side, it's pure love and pure grief. And so when it comes down, and, and you've already said the word disenfranchised grief. So when it comes down to the loss of this thing that maybe the only thing that was there for me, and especially now when we're so disconnected, it's like, where do I find my support? So I'll tell you what, I'm going to stand up really tall right now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a shout out. And I'm going to say, listen, whether you're a social worker listening to this or you know a social worker, you, you've got to tell them to check us out and to come join us because this is that next level of care 
that it is all about love and all about grief. That's it. It's not complicated. It's not estranged. There's no disappointment because he didn't graduate college or he didn't go to, you know, do whatever bigger things that you envisioned. There was no expectations. None. Only one. Love me and I'll love you. That's it. So we have this amazing opportunity to do this reach out and say, guys, here, whether you're a social worker and you're looking for the next level of care, here you go. Or if you know one, go tell them, go do this. This is right in your wheelhouse. So, oh my gosh, you and I just get so worked up, don't we? We get so worked up. I, I want to go back. I want to go back on something. Okay. How did you get all eyes on you with this beautiful award that you just got? What, how, how did all that happen? Connect the dots for us. So this is a longstanding 1994 is when this program began, but because, and like I said, it's a, it's not many people who get inducted into this program because there's not that many new things in the world. You know, Colleen, I mean, when you think about it, we all think, oh, I have an original idea. And then you Google it and there it's not original at all you know it's been done it's been done differently you know so finding something that is brand new that hasn't been done before is really a rare a rare thing and um so i had a couple of local social workers who were very aware of what we were doing with angels paws and they nominated me and um sent it through and I got word that I had been inducted. Uh -huh. And it is a weird year to be inducted because they normally I've been inducted into the um, group of 2020, but because of COVID and they normally, I guess, get together in Washington DC for a big celebration um, that's been postponed to 2021. Okay. So, and which is so interesting. I mean, it's just so interesting because that coincides with the year that I will be the president for the IAAHPC. So, Talk about the sun, moon, and stars lining up. Yes. You know, I it love is. it. I love it. I love it. So, what are we going to do with this within the IHPC, Tammy? What what what's your vision? So, my vision is that right now we have precious few social workers who are in our membership and and with me being the president in 2021 my goal is to expand that membership and to invite social workers in to join us in this community and so let me just talk about why why that's really important the um with hospice with human hospice and with pet hospice there is a commitment to the interdisciplinary team when you're doing that type of work. It's very important because in hospice, the patient is defined bigger. It is not just the individual, the individual has the terminal illness. That's not who the patient is with hospice. Who the patient is with hospice includes the caregiving family. And with the, um, with that interdisciplinary team and with the International Association for Animal Hospice and Palliative Care, that is the natural place for this interdisciplinary team to come together. But right now we're a little bit lopsided. We have a lot of veterinarians and registered vet techs who are in our group. And as we talk about the interdisciplinary team and how important it is to make sure that we have a licensed professional who is available for the human side of that patient. So in, in pet hospice, if we're defining the patient bigger to include the, indivi the individual who has the terminal illness, the pet, and the caregiving family, that is a human quadrant. And while the veterinarians and registered vet techs who really get attracted into end of life work, at least I find this, and I'm sure you do too, Colleen, they are compassionate, kind, amazing, amazing people. So they're able to give the human element an entirely different kind of soft experience with the end mm -hmm. of the life of the pet. But they are not licensed to help the human if the human has a comorbidity of, as we talked before, let's say that they have suicidal ideation and they're worried 
You know, the only reason I'm really here is to take care of my pet. And when my pet's gone, I don't know if I'm going to live beyond that. So giving our veterinarians and registered vet techs who are doing this work, a team member who absolutely has the skill and the ability to help that human navigate those very, very rough waters is a gift that I feel that the IHPC can give mm -hmm. to our membership. And that is just making this interdisciplinary team so much more robust by inviting those social workers in. And we've got this um, social work certificate that helps to, first of all, teach what is animal hospice and palliative care and then start for them to understand how their skills and everything that they bring can match right up with what this field is all about so that they can contribute to our other members who are on the clinical side taking care of that pet who has either the terminal illness or is a very special needs pet or just very old. So, right. right. Tammy, talk a little detail about the social work certificate program that the IHPC has. Give us a, you know, kind of a step one, step two, step three, and, and dig into that. Okay. So where this, the certificate came from, uh, in 2015, our founder, Amir Shanan, had envisioned that we were going to be able to take education deeper in our organization. Every single year, we have an amazing conference. It's amazing. And in this conference, we have top-notch education about what's going on in this emerging field. So we have that. And we also have this incredible opportunity to network with like-minded people, people who really have a heart and passion for those geriatric pets or pets who are nearing the end of their life. And they're people who are struggling with that because this was the most amazing relationship as you were describing earlier, you know, you don't have the same quarrels with your pet that you may have with some of your human family members. So that bond is really, really deep, which means that when the loss happens, the loss is really, really deep as well. So we already have this great education that was happening once a year, but Amir, envisioned that we were going to take that education deeper. So he put together a five person task force and that task force was charged with creating in-depth ed education. So the certification uh, the, for the animal hospice and palliative care certification on the vet and the vet tech side is over a hundred hours of CE for that population. And when the task force came together, I was named on the task force. So there are there were four veterinarians and then I was also on the task force representing because I am also a registered vet tech but I am also a licensed social worker as well. So I was representing those two members of the interdisciplinary team as we put together that certification. And I was a full-fledged faculty member on the certification as well. But the uh, IAHPC is committed to the interdisciplinary team. And we ran into a little situation where in the human world, this is one of the differences in, in terms of having the two species, but in the uh, veterinary world, we could use the term certification and we could actually certify the vets and the vet techs. In the human world, on the social work side, we needed to put together what is called a social work certificate. So it's not a certification, but it is a certificate and it is in-depth knowledge. And it pulls from the entire curriculum that we put together for the certification. We pulled out the best of the best of the um, different lectures and modules into the social work certificate to completely give a great rounded education to the social worker about, first of all, what is this field? I mean, I was named a pioneer because it's very lonely out here doing this yeah. work as a social worker. People didn't know it was even available to do this kind of work. So in this certificate, it's a great place to come and learn what is this field, animal hospice and palliative care. 
And then, like I said, dig into the depth of the education so that you can actually apply the principles. And you can actually apply the principles if you happen to be a social worker at home and you have senior pets. You're going to be amazed what you learn about the whole entire process and things you can actually do to comfort your pet and give them greater quality as they're beginning their transition. So it's great from a personal perspective. So just going through the social work certificate as a social worker for your own self, if you have pets and are a pet lover, get your CE in a very unique and creative way because it is all NASW approved. And so you can get your your certificate, your CEs this year um, while you're learning about this new field and what you might do with your own pet but also how you then can apply it to your practice as a social worker. You know what I love about what you said, Tammy, and this, this applies to not only our social workers, and as I always say, I think the cool thing about IHPC is our commitment to the village of the support, you know, and it's the village that surrounds, and whether it's social worker or veterinary or vet tech or Reiki or communicator or spiritual advisor, whatever it may be, there's a village that can be there. But what I love about what you said, and it's so true, that, you know, my goal, and I, and I know it's your goal too, my goal is always to have a pet parent who says to me, the end was perfect. There's nothing I wish I would have done different. I did everything. And to know that their feelings were validated, to know they had somebody, because, you know, when you're in the middle of it, you're not thinking, you, you're just not thinking. And so to have somebody give you permission for whatever you want to do or whatever you want to feel or however you want to behave, you know, in, in honoring that, that precious love. That's what I love about all this. And as we, you know, kind of do our altar call here, if you will, with all of our social workers and it's like, Hey, come, come up and join us and be this. And not only for your own self, but to be a part of this village that gets to surround all these pet lovers and go through this, beautiful journey of honoring just a grumpy old cat you know i mean there's nothing better nothing better right there there really isn't and we make it very easy for you because 37.5 of the hours of our social work certificate are hours of ce you can get right at home they are online and on demand so you can get a big chunk of your education right there while you've got that grumpy old cat sitting right on your own lap right. and you're learning all about the about this field and about the tenants of this field so you can do a lot of it um, right at home and then we do ask you to come to the conference um, as the other bookend for the social work certificate so that not only are you getting the latest and greatest up to speed education that we offer each and every year at our conference but you have an opportunity to network with people right in your community who are doing this work and are looking for you as a social worker yes. so yeah you know tammy what i, I want to talk to conference one second and i don't i've been going you know since the get-go um, I haven't missed a conference yet for 11 years and every year, every year this happens every year. I find, I don't know, a handful. We'll just go five because I don't want to get dramatic and over exaggerate, but I'm going to say five, five people attending the conference for their first time who I find tearing up somewhere in the corner and I go over to make sure they're okay. And they go every time I found my people. Yeah. I found my people and they're yeah. just so overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, these are my people that we, we do. We're like-minded. We may have different ways to get there, but we're like-minded in what we want to provide and the support we want to give. And it, and it truly, we do always call it our tribe. Don't we, Tammy? It's our tribe. Yes. yes. Love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So speaking of our tribe, Give us, give us some parting thoughts. I just wanted to make this a really, you know, robust, informational, which it has been delicious. And, and I just give us some parting thoughts that you have in, in three ways. Number one, regarding this, this um, award you've just been given and what it means to, to social workers. And secondly, that call to social workers. And thirdly, 
what it's going to mean for you as you go into your president term. Just some really quick high level thoughts. Well, I just, you know, as we're putting out the call to social workers to really begin to expand your mind about what the possibilities are here. So I, as a social worker and a registered vet tech, actually opened my own service in 2010 called Angels Pods in Cincinnati. And so as you join our group, you're going to find that there's a lot of veterinarians who have their own businesses, but I, as a social worker, opened my own business in Cincinnati in this field. So really expand your mind and, and know that if you are looking around in your own community, for example, and there's not somebody already doing this work, as a social worker, one of the things that we are known for is our innovation and our ability to, to take on challenges where there is a population that needs to be served that is not being served. And that's our pet parents. And that's what I found when I founded Angels Paws in 2010. When I Googled animal hospice and pet hospice in 2004. This is all began for me in 2004, Colleen. So yeah. when I Googled those two words, they did not come up. And it was placed in my heart that this was my calling. And so I took the next six years to really learn how to mirror pet hospice for the human world. And I went to work in human hospice as a social worker for three and a half years. And while I was there, I saw the key role that the nurse plays. So while I knew as a social worker, I could provide the emotional support to pet parents, I needed to understand the disease process if I was actually gonna open my own service um, here in Cincinnati with this topic. And it was, there was no model out there anywhere in the world in 2004 as I was looking around with how do I start a pet hospice? And so while I was working at hospice as a social worker, I saw the key role that the nurse plays. So at the age of 50, I went back to school and became a registered vet tech. So this was all second act stuff for me. All of, the, all of the work that I had done up to this point really led me to this moment. So for social workers who are out there who have maybe been on a trajectory with their career, I just want to expand your thinking to let you know that this is something that you can add to what you're currently doing or it can be, for me, it was a complete right turn and I went full force into it. My company now has 15 employees. We have a full-time veterinarian. I have seven registered vet techs. I have a crematory staff because we have a crematory. We actually have two crematories on site. We offer free pet loss support groups to our community, whether they've used our service or not. And then I do one-on-one -on -one grief counseling for, for mm -hmm. clients in my community. So I, I share all of this with, with people who might be tuning in and just starting to think about, wow, I'd really like to explore something a little different. And it's something that you can just stick your big toe in or you can dive your whole body, your whole professional body in. And really, as Colleen is saying, you can really find your peeps. For me, um, I think each of the presidents who, who, you know, of all of the past presidents, which Colleen is one as well, um, of the IAAHPC, we kind of have something that we really are passionate about seeing happen during our term. And for me, my passion is about building this community. I really want to pull this community together and add the element of the social worker and mental health professional so that we can make a fully robust interdisciplinary team in 2021. That is my goal. I'm excited to see how it all turns out at the end of this year too. Awesome. And that layered on everything else we've got going on. I mean, I, I seriously believe we're the coolest association out there. Oh, we just, oh, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> the things we do and the things we, the, the things we get to do and the, ch and the changes we've made and the changes we still get to make with people's lives and their precious lives. Yeah. It's just, it's awesome. It's so awesome. Yeah. And you're so inspirational. And uh, congratulations on your award. Nobody is more deserving than you. 
And uh, you know what? Again, for all of our social workers out there, come, come join us. Come join us and uh, be a part of us and come be a part of our tribe, right? And if you know a social worker, send them this link. Let them, let them find out about us. We want to meet you. Yes, definitely. All right, Tammy, thanks for everything you had to say. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to you being in the role. And congratulations again. Thank you, Colleen.